Hi, I'm your host, Benjamin Franklin, and today I will be interviewing Gerald Smith. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm honored to be on the show. You're, how long have you believed that the Earth is flat? Well, um, when I was six years old, my mother took me to a penguin exhibit, and she dropped me on my head. And ever since then, I've believed that the Earth is flat. That must have been a hard day. It was. I remember very vividly there was a penguin that came at the, the glass separating you know, the audience from the exhibit, mm -hmm. and um, that scared my mom, and that's why she dropped me. But ever since then, I believe the Earth is flat. Do you believe that other planets are flat, too? Well, see, the problem with that is, um, well, NASA, you know, they make up the other planets. Um, the other planets aren't real. We actually sent up really good printed pictures of the planets, and that's what people actually see. So, n no, I don't think the other planets are flat because, or flat because they don't exist. So what about the moons? Well, see, we didn't actually land on the moon. Um, that was another fake by NASA. The moon is another printed object. They, they sent it up on a spaceship in 1297. They sent it up on a spaceship that the aliens made, and they, they, um, they made the moon appear in the sky. So about the aliens, do you think there are aliens on Earth right now? Yes. OK. Um. What about other, other solar systems? Well, every, plant, every star has one flat planet. The aliens that came here several thousand years ago are from the planet Glorpadorp uh, in the star system Cerberus. It's about 100 light years away. And they came on a spaceship after realizing that we believed the Earth was round. They wanted to educate us dumb fools. Okay, so what about the sun? If the Earth is flat, is the sun flat too? Well, funny enough, the sun is actually a cube, so it's almost like a giant rotating, you know, cube of magma. So how do we orbit the sun? Well, see, a lot of people say that days are caused by the by the 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 Earth spinning on an axis, but that's not actually true. See. The Earth is faced towards the sun, and it does kind of a spotlight around the disk. So if you think of like the sun having a disk, and then the sun kind of goes around that. Well, that's all we have for today, folks. Hello, and good afternoon. Welcome back to The Oprah Show. And we're here today with Hugh James. He's a graphic designer, and so. How, what made you decide to go into the graphic designing career? I like creating things and making art with my creations. Like, and out of all the video games that you've designed, what was your favorite? Probably like a Grand Theft Auto game that I helped design some character designs on. Why? Because I like GTA. It's a pretty fun game, shooting people. <laughs> Have you ever thought of doing anything besides graphic design? Uh, probably photography. Why that? Because I like creating things and like taking pictures, I can capture the essence of people. That's, that's nice. It's good to do in your spare time. Yeah. I would say you don't look like a graphic designer. Yeah, I get that a lot. You don't look like a talk show host. Okay. And, um,. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> well, anyways, so while we were on break, I heard, <laughs> while we were on break, you told me something about you having kids. Yeah, I have two kids, a boy and a girl. They're in high school right now. They're at McGavick High. They're doing pretty good. Do you like the school? Yeah, it's a pretty good school. Like, is it good? Yeah, Would you they, they, have a, they have a bunch of good pathways. Like what? Can, What's your favorite pathway at the school? DDC. They have pretty good uh, academies in there. Okay, like what is DDC? It's Digital Design and Communication. It's what I went through in school. It's pretty good. My kids are both in there. One's in audio, one's in AV production. 
they're both doing pretty good in life. And then the audio, audio, what pathway did you do? I did uh, AV production. Oh, okay, okay. Nobody in photography? No. Mm, that's nice, that's nice to do. So, about your wife? I'm divorced. Oh. Sorry to say. Gosh. He's available. Get up, guys. <laughs> It's really nice having you on this show. You know that? Yeah. It's nice being on the show. I seen you on the show with Ellen. Did you like that? It's not as good as Oprah. It's not as good as Oprah. Never is. Well, it was nice having you today. And that's all the time that we have with Hugh James. And look out for his next game. Yeah. It's going to be called Call of Duty 2. Wow. Thank you. Have a nice day. Hi, I'm Melinda Egg, and welcome back to Ain't That Something. Today, our show, we are here today with Esther jo Jane Doe with a professional conspiracist. <laughs> She's here to tell us some stuff about that. Tell us about it. Well, conspiracy theories are my forte. Ooh. <laughs> and I really like to go into what people want to know, not necessarily the really like deep ones, but just the ones that the world wants to know a lot about celebrities and the Illuminati and things that are just very controversial. Well, ain't that something? So tell us about one of them. Well, a very popular conspiracy theory is that the Illuminati is made up of a lot of celebrities, and they also kill a lot of people. Like they I've heard about Beyonce in there, right? Yes, yeah, she is always like one of the main people brought up in the Illuminati, but she is not. I know. I've done my research, and she just she is not in the Illuminati, but her husband is, and of so course, is her daughter. Know. Of course, of like course. early recruiter. Blue Ivy, hmm, no. Mm. <laughs> Ain't that something. Ain't that something. <laughs> and they tried to recruit Beyonce, but like she wasn't a part of she it. She wasn't having it. No, she a queen, she don't need that. She don't. But they've tried to recruit many people like Beyonce. And you know, Beyonce just is able to not give in to that, but people are so greedy in this world that they just want fame and fortune, so they all up in the So they're Illuminati. willing to like, join the Illuminati for like... They sell fame. their souls to the devil, literally. That makes a lot of sense. Lots and, of sense. Yeah. Is there something else you would like to know about? Um, what about the lizard situation? Oh, that is a very, very popular conspiracy theory too, that a lot of celebrities are lizard people, such as... Lizards, ain't that something? Justin Bieber and Miley Cyrus, and I think even Donald Trump. Wow. Well, ain't that something? That's all the time we have today. I'm Melissa Egg. Good night. All right, it's your girl Pumpernickel, and we're here with Bob Grapefruit. Yeah. And he is an uprising musician. Tell us about yourself. Well, I've uh, toured the UK twice and America about five times now. Five? Wow. And do you plan on going to Paris? Yeah, it, it seems like a really interesting place. I seem to be very fascinated with it. And so what makes you want to become this musician? Like, how did it all start for you? Well, I kind of listen to music, you know, I'd be very into it. I knew all the instruments and, you know, started thinking about it. You know, I'm pretty good at this. So started writing my own music, get, got a, pub, a couple songs published. Hmm, a couple. And what's your favorite instrument? I at least got to say the drums. And why do you like the drums so much? It's because it can be so many varieties and different kinds of sets. Hmm. I like that. And so tell us about your childhood. What happened in your childhood that made you want to be this musician all of a sudden? Or was it sudden? Well, it was kind of when I started as a kid, you know. I was my, on my own with just my music. Mm -hmm. 
and you know just developed them on there. Teen hoods, you know, started you know writing songs when I got my free time. And would you like to tell us about your new album? Yeah, yeah. it's going to be coming out in a month. Tell yeah. us the name. Uh, Evolution. And what is your favorite? Um, sing what, do you have a single on the album? No, I've been doing a lot more collabs with it, that album, more than any others. Um, so do you have a favorite song on this album? Currently not yet, because not all the songs are finished, so I don't know how, how they all sound. <laughs> and I hear that. Well, we would love you to come and perform for us. Ooh. Yeah. That's a very big honor right there. <laughs> yes. So when you get your album all set, I would love you back on my show. It would be a very great pleasure to come back. I know it would. And... Folks, that's all we have for today. Peace and love. <laughs> Good afternoon, Chicago. I'm Carly Carls, <laughs> and today we have a special guest on the show. Here in Chicago, you know, we don't have many rednecks, and he, right now we have Billy Bob Bobson. He is the only redneck in Chicago. Hello. How you doing today, Billy Bobson? Well, driving was pretty bad. I saw some hoodlums get into some garbage, mobbing mm. pigeons. I'm not sure. Oh, wow. Well, okay, so the reason you're famous right now, we have you on the, on the show, is because you had a, a video go viral. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I tied some fireworks to my boat because I wanted to go faster, but turns out fireworks don't actually have that much propulsion power. Mm -hmm. So my boat just ended up blowing up with me on it. But yeah. it was cool. I don't think that's a very good idea. Well, I like had four packs of beer or something. I don't remember. That's how many packs of beer I had. Mm. So you were drunk? Uh, I am not. I'm not at liberty to answer that. Okay. Okay. Do you, are you hurt at all from the fireworks? Um, I can't feel my toes. Uh, but that oh. was normal. That that my you you had. have all your toes though, right? I haven't, all, I haven't looked down there. I don't take my clothes off ever. That's how the government oh. gets you. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And in your socks? Never take them off. Never taken them off since birth. I've had the same socks on since the day I was born. Wow. That's how the government are gets they, you. Are they small? They're, they're a little tight, yeah. Okay. A little, little, little tight, but... Okay. Well, how are you liking Chicago? A lot of, uh, a lot of uh, interesting folk here, if you know what I mean. Okay. I like it. I like Chicago. Too many, uh, too many of those bad hombres, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, okay. Listen, well, listen, I'm yeah. not, I ain't, I ain't no, I ain't no bad guy, but that wall must be built. That, that wall just needs to be built. Talking about saying? Trump's wall? Exactly, yep. Mm -hmm. Trump's wall. Listen, listen, listen. Build a wall to keep all the criminals out, because listen, listen, Trump, Trump's a smart dude, okay? He wants, he wants, he wants told, he wants told someone. I'll never forget this. If I had a million dollars... I'd lose it because I'm a bad businessman. But mm. actually, he was just trying to trick the liberals. Mm. That's how he gets you. Well, it's been very interesting talking to you about all of, all of this stuff. You're very. I, I don't. I don't know where guy. I am. I don't know where I am right now. Mm. Oh. This, well, this is a liberal conspiracy. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Okay. But then. I'm afraid that's all the time we have today. And join us next time for our next guest. This is Carly Corn. Make America and great again. <laughs> good evening, Chicago. Welcome. To the Z Files. I'm your host, Steve McSpirit. The truth is somewhere. With me today is Danny Phantom, author, explorer, and amateur ghost hunter. So tell me, Danny, when did you find your first ghost? Well, I was, I was about 15 years old. My dog died, and about a week later, I was hearing stuff in my basement, and I go down to check and see what it was. I seen dog prints in, uh, on the floor. No kidding. So uh, would you say that that was a good spirit or an evil spirit? Because I know in your book, Hidden Agenda, you talk about good versus evil spirits. Well, it was my dog, so it was a good spirit. And I kind of seemed to find bad spirits in abandoned places. 
Ah, okay. So how, where, where was like the most evil place you ever visited? Um, it was an abandoned ap uh, apartment complex. It was pretty run down. I felt uh, dark energy there. Dark energy. So could you explain like what does dark energy feel like in your body when you encounter it? It kind of feels like you're, uh, you're getting weak and you get dizzy. Dizzy, wow. Um, do you find more, more dark energy in the places you visit or maybe not so dark energy? Um, it's all, it really just all depends on uh, the area that you're at, but I seem to find more dark, dark uh, energy. More dark energy. Um, do you think that maybe the way that people die depends on their energy or, you know, their energy can be dictated by that? Well, it, it can for sure be the way that they died, but I think it's more on how they were before they died. Like, if they were a bad person, then usually it tends to them being more of a dark spirit. Awesome. And just one quick question before we go. How would you say the energy of this place feels? Um, I kind of feel a dark energy, but it's not, not as bad. Dark energy, yeah. of course. This is the government. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us on the Z-Files. Remember, the truth is out there. Next week, we're going to be talking to a woman who can speak to plants and an astronomer who thinks he's found Mars again. Thanks for joining me. Hey, we're back today with uh, Oprah Winfrey. She interviewed me a couple days ago. Different name, but uh, we're going to be discussing her childhood today. So, Oprah Winfrey, how was your childhood at the age of five, we'll say? My childhood was very traumatic. I suffered a long time without living with my mom, and then I finally got to move in with her. Okay. And we lived in Milwaukee. Milwaukee? How was Milwaukee? Milwaukee was very dangerous. I lived in a very rough neighborhood and we moved, she, because I lived in a rough neighborhood, my mom forced me to move down to Nashville with my father. Oh. How did you like Nashville? Nashville was good, although my dad was very strict, but my mom ended up getting pregnant again and caught, forcing me to move back to Milwaukee. Uh, did you uh, keep the baby or did you abort it? I did neither. Uh, so, yeah. I had a miscarriage. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, it was actually, I had the miscarriage after I ran away from home. Because oh. my mom, well, I ran away from home, found out that I was pregnant, went back home, miscarried, and then moved back to Nashville with my father. And from that point, it was all about education. Did you try again for another kid? Uh, no, I did not. Didn't want to go through the trauma again, you know. So let's talk about your wealth. Let's talk about how you started to grow. Well, honestly, my money came from the fact that my dad had a barbershop down here and I used to help him in the barbershop. But I was in a lot, I became class president at school and we had a lot of interviews and stuff like that. And someone from a radio show, they came into our school and they saw me and they asked me that I want to be on the radio. And I agreed to it, I liked it, and I ended up getting a lot of feedback from it. Like, a lot of radio show hosts, they all came to me, and I ended up with my own network. How is it like having your own network? Do you like it? I love it. This should be, I don't love the stress, but having my own money, directing myself, I love it. Is it better than this show? <sighs> don't go there, Phil. Uh, yeah. I, just, I had to, I had to. No, nothing's better than Oprah. Nothing's better. Uh, well, you know, Dr. Phil's a little better. A little better. <laughs> well, thanks. Thanks for coming. We're, we're lucky we had you. Thank you for having me. I love to be here. That's all, folks. Welcome back, everybody. Now here's my special guest, Sam Lettuce, the Hambonis. Hi. <laughs> oh, my God. Hi. Please Hi. have a seat. So, I know you have this book, but I'm really dying to know was this a like natural gift or is this something that you had to learn? Well, like ham boning just like runs in my family. It started with my great grandpa, the slap happy grandpappy, the original. Oh, I've heard of and that. it just like followed down from there. It's just like a gift that like you could practice, but you'll never get. It has to be given to you. Does your family support this? 
they completely 100% support it. Have they been like funding you? They're all ham bonus. Oh, really? Yeah, it like runs in the family, like the entire family. Oh, do you think maybe you'll do a like group performance? Maybe in the future one day. Oh, well you have a world tour going on right now. Mm -hmm. And like what have been some of your favorite places to perform? Um, I would say London is my favorite, maybe Paris. That was a really big crowd, you know. Not really the USA, it's not. I know a lot of people, like, at concerts, they, like, jump up and down and scream. What do people do while you perform? Well, mostly they just, they just sit and watch in silence. I mean, you just enjoy the sounds. Is there, like, a special talent you have to have for this? Or can, like, it has to be natural? Mm-hmm. But, like, what's a natural gift that you have to have for it? You just have to have, like, rhythm and just, like, you know, that's about oh, it. Oh, okay. Most people just can't attain that. Well, you have a book out now called How to Be a Ham Bonist. And I would just love to know if you would give us a sneak peek at of my How tour? to Be a Ham Bonist. Okay, here I go. Is amazing. Well, that's that just a is, little sneak peek. That's just a sneak peek. Yes. How long do your performances go for? Three hours. Three hours. That takes mad skill. Yes. Well, I cannot thank you enough for being Thanks here. Thanks for having I know me, you Kendall. You have to have like so much time in order to come here, and I wish you nothing but the best of luck on your tour. You should travel the world. Special thanks to my guests Cardi B, Matthew McConaughey, and Sam Lettuce the Hambonist. Tune in next week where I talk with Dr. Phil and Oprah Winfrey about their sucky lives. Bye! Hi, I'm Stan Lee and welcome to my show. Today we have a very special guest, the Dandelion. Hey! So, uh, I hear you were uh, in the dance department? Yes, I am in the dance department and I do a pretty dang good job at it. <laughs> what, what made you uh, start going to the dance, you know, line? Well, it all started with me when I really, like, it really started as a child. I just like dancing around and as I got older, it helped me express how I feel about certain things. Like if I'm mad, then the type of dancing I do will be more of a contemporary, I guess. And from there, I just, I just never stopped. <laughs> it's nothing, nothing that special. So I just, I'm just curious, uh, where was your first gig at with the dancing? It was at my church. I was in the dance group over there. And yeah, I just, we had a little dance group, and from there, I just, I just it more, I got more advanced in it, I guess, and I took more classes outside of church. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you are you doing any gigs soon, or? Uh, well, I was supposed to be going to Atlanta, and then I was supposed to be having a competition in, jo not Georgia. Um, in Chicago soon, so, Ooh, yeah. That's pretty big. I'm countrywide. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, where would you be, uh, most, uh, favorite places to do your dances? Um, really, in my house, because I'm more com comfortable with the space that I have, and I don't have to be around other people, so I can just dance how I want to, really. My favorite type of dance is jazz, because I'm sassy, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, would you mind uh, showing us uh, some of your dance moves? Yeah, I'll show y'all some dance moves. All right, thank you. And also, <laughs> thank you for coming onto the show. Uh, that's all the time that we have for today, so I'll see you in the next episode.
<laughs> what did I say? Yo, what's up, lovely people? This is uh, Landis hits on random girls at the bar. Hey, girl, are you my appendix? Because I got this feeling in, the stu in my stomach that I need to take you out. With a gun? Hey, girl, I'm wearing pants. You're wearing pants. What a coincidence, eh? Hey girl. Hey. What up? If you were a triangle, you'd be a cute triangle. Like Phineas and Ferb. Yeah, yeah, like 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 Phineas and Ferb. Okay. <coughs> girl. What's up? You're a nine out of ten, because I'm the one you need. Okay. Hey, girl. Are you a speeding ticket? Because you got fine written all over you. Look, okay, it's, it's, for, it's, it's for the audience. Can you, can you play along? Man, I got 12-year-old I got boys out here watching, trying to, trying to pick up chicks using my methods. Just play along, man. <coughs> oh, compose myself. Compose yourself, Alandis. <clears throat> if you were a president, you'd be Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> See? And it's just that easy. It's just that. It's so easy. You just call him the president, Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> look, look, she ain't even a paid actor, man. Just a random girl on the street. Hey, girl. What up? You know, it's rude not to make eye contact, girl. <laughs> Are you Google? Because you're everything I'm looking for. Ooh, it's that easy. It, she just, you didn't see it. We cut it out, but she just wrote her number down on my notebook. I'm going to hit her up later. You know what? I got, I, got, I, got one, I got one more. Girl, one last one. Girl, you an alien? Because you out of this world. <sighs> Disclaimer, none of these pickup lines actually work. This has been Alandis hitting on random people at the bar. Uh, feel good? No. Okay. I'll see you. I'll see you. I'll see you. You, you party people next time. Alandis out. We're students from McGavick High School. And we're at Nika turning up. And some of our favorite positions are being someone's guest, light man, camera work, audio, floor director, technical design, set design, floor director, set design, camera director. Thank you,